Greetings and welcome to Tropico. I am your President Leo, and today I figured let's go to a sunnier place. We've been stuck in dank dungeons and the dreary world of Nox. A Caribbean island is just where I need to be. No, I've finished both campaigns, Classic and Absolute Power. Uh, so I figure I'd show you what I've learned. And we'll start with bananas. It's a 20 year term. The abdication of the old president, the Saint Helena, provided the perfect opportunity for your rise to power. Now, as the head of state, it is your job to lead this small island nation to a new age of prosperity. Saint Helena is a modest island with rich and fertile lands, which have become, which have attracted the attention of the American fruit conglomerate Frutas Limited. You should make use of the Gringos to secure the financial future of the island as well as your own Swiss bank account. Your goal is to export at least 8,000 units of agricultural exports. Good. <laughs> Alright, so we could pick any one of these uh, very fine presidentes, but we'll stick with a custom one because that's more fun. Alright, so here's one I've made earlier. Look snazzy. It is the white suit, definitely. And we'll go to the more important bit. The name Leo, of course. We have the background farmer for the extra production. And the communist rebellion, again, for the extra farmer production. Diplomatic, simply because it's the best trait to have in this entire game. Having a free diplomatic ministry is so good. Green thumb to reduce the pollution because uh, farms produce quite a bit of pollution. I'm not gonna build any real factory, so that's not important. And then for my flaws, womanizer is relatively safe. Because uh, there will be no smart women on the farms. And, well, I don't really care much about the religion fa religi religious fashion here, because, well, we're not going that high in tech. And the coward is a fairly safe one, because I'm not really expecting any rebel troubles on this island. So let's dive in. Congratulations on your victory, Presidente. Allow me to, pro to provide you with this helpful advice. Begin the construction of farms to cultivate the lands. Farming will guarantee a steady stream of export revenue, as well as feed the citizens. Coffee, sugar and tobacco are the most profitable crops, but they will not feed the island's population. Martin Gomez, former president of St. Helena, California, USA. P.S. Take no stock in the rumors behind my abdication. I assure you that it was due to health reasons. Yeah, getting stabbed in the back does tend to uh, cut your health really short. Alright. So, let's take a look at our island and let's pause. Here is us. What do you want? I'm busy ruling! And we'll be moving him around shortly. Alright, so the most important things first is to see what your island is being given. Yeah, because most of the stuff is random, really. Um... Let's look at the education. We've got two college workers. One is a soldier, one is a farmer. Two high school level people. One of which is retired. That's not going to help me really, because retired people don't work. And the rest is really uneducated of grade school. I have no unemployed that has needs time to, to take over so that people can check. Um, the factions are relatively fine with me. They don't really expect much in democracy because I have a communist operation. Do you like being controlled? How does it feel being denied to reap the fruits of your labor? How is it possible that your sweat and tears are only fattening the ruthless oppressors while you work 14 hour shifts? I say enough. No more lies. It's time for change, and I, Betty Boom, will be your guide to liberation. Join the resistance, or die! I always prefer to start with Juanito, but uh, Betty Boom will do. And let's look at more important stuff, export prices. Now, we need to produce uh, fruit, so basically that's banana, 
papaya and pineapple. Now, uh, bananas and pineapples provide me with the best profit. Papaya, not as much. Um, besides that, coffee will also bring in quite a big profit. And tobacco, not as much. And sugar, I really doubt we can build any sugar on this island anyway. So that's what we'll be doing. Now, let's take a look at the fertilities. We have one corn farm here. Not important. You usually start with at least one. Let's see, the fertility for banana is 55%. That's quite good. Papaya, not so much. Pineapple, slightly better, but now uh, farmers don't really have much skill yet. There's not much room for coffee, but you can possibly put a few on this ridge here. And tobacco doesn't really have any favorable ground. Most of it's in the city, and I'm not going to bulldoze just to put a full few farms down. And sugar has less than 30%. That, really, that means really there's nowhere on the island that is actually profitable. Uh, in other resources, we don't have any iron, no bauxite, no gold, no oil. We have fishing, of course, because every island has fishing. We can probably cut down a few trees, but that's not really worth it. And, of course, pastures for various kinds of cattle. Humidity might be important if you're looking for that. Uh, I don't really check for humidity because, well, you'll know. That's really only if you want to uh, produce sugar. Beauty is important if you want tourism. Uh, no, not this time. And pollution, well, we have a little bit in the city. And we have no landfills yet, so... The rest of these buttons are not quite important for this. Alright, so for housing we mostly have the shanties, which are terrible, and the shacks, which are worse. We need to get rid of those. And we have fairly little other in infrastructure. Of course, we have the palace here. And that's where we live. And we need to uh, issue some edicts. In particular, this one the USSR Development Aid, which requires a diplomatic ministry, which is why that particular uh, trade is so good. Because you can build this for free, normally that's about $5,000, and while we do have a sizable budget of 10000 with a possible 10000 of debt I can accru accrue, uh, you don't really want to go into debt. It's unavoidable, but you don't really want to. Now, we need to get rid of these housing. We can do that in a number of ways. One of them is building tenements. Tenements, however, are pretty expensive at this point, as are our apartment blocks. So we'll just have to... Uh, I'll need the uh, USSR edict first, before I do anything else. And... I want to make us a little bit of room so that I can put a housing down here next to the side. But yeah, that will do. Alright, so then we send my what avatar here, and we make this high priority. We don't have anything else building yet. So. Make it so. For speed options, we have really slow, barely average speed that is, an, is usable, and somewhat faster speed so you can end the game. We'll just go to slightly faster speed. We'll also need some infrastructure, namely a garage. Garage. Uh, let's see, where can we build it? That's close enough. That'll do. I want this built first. Now, this mission particularly has some benefits uh, lined up for me in the form of random events. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. First, we need this built. Alright, there comes the first builder. We have a full lineup of builders. But of course, forced. Of course, first they must reach this building, then walk over here as they receive their building orders. Fruitas Limited, the multinational food conglomerate, has offered to send some of its specialists to help in the construction of new homes for the people of Saint Helena. This will effectively halve the construction costs of houses and tenements, which is good, because now tenements cost two thousand and houses cost one thousand, as much as country houses. They are much better. 
So we can now put down a few houses. Alright, let's get some road, road in. Connecting the farm. You don't need uh, a road connection to the farm per se, but it helps. Because it will help people getting around. Alright, so the diplomatic ministry is building. Now, we probably won't have anyone working in the diplomatic ministry, but that's not important. That's not necessary for the edict to be issued. Which might be a flaw in the game, I don't know, but it helps that you can just do it. As far as other edicts, because this is foreign policy, we have economic policy. Now, building permits I will not do until we've got at least some economy going. We've got domestic policies, which none of which are really useful to me now. And megalomania edicts. Uh, megalomania, e megalomania edicts give you points for your megalomania score. Which just gives you more points at the end of the level. Uh, I don't really find them very useful. I mean, free houses is fine, but... Uh, because you won't be making much of this, because you know, for one thing, these shanties don't have any rent at all. Neither do the shacks. But the other houses will, for instance. The fact that the house has a rent of three. Which would be nothing if we implemented that. Uh, usually I just go for the national day. And maybe the ideology book, because that's relatively safe. The rest of them are not the... Uh, for instance, I have no idea how privatization is actually supposed to be able to help you. Because you make far more much, much more money, just... Let's, uh, let's make the houses lower priority, actually, because I want the uh, garage first, but... The diplomatic ministry is finished, so now we get to use this as our development aid. And now, tenements, which used to be 4,000, are now 400. So I'm gonna put one down. There. That'll help. Right, now. And now we need to start thinking about money, because otherwise we'll run out. Pineapple is probably the most productive fruit source we have. Now. You'll need to, uh, to place your farms close to these green squares, but not per se on the green squares, because that will reduce the amount of land they have to work with. Uh, so we'll just place one down here. And we'll put another one uh, up here. And then I'll just bend the road to it. Very nice. Let's get my guy to Speak first. I don't help, have build, help with the building. Tropico is spiraling into debt as the money in the national treasury has been depleted. If measures are not taken soon, the financial situation on the island may deteriorate rapidly. That'll happen. That will always happen, pretty much. It doesn't matter much, it is just uh, for the way if you make money which is either from the US and the USSR, which will depend pretty much on, uh, on certain conditions. For instance, I'm oriented towards communism, which the US doesn't like. It's the 1950s, after all. I'm not entirely sure how it calculates this, but uh, it, I suppose it has something to do with the capitalist and communist factions on the island. Anyway, I need to finish the garage first. And then we can start thinking about some more useful programs. For instance, I want to get rid of all these shanties. I've got a country house here, that's fine. It has a housing quality of 50, which isn't great. For instance, these houses here have a quality of 70 and they can pretty much house the same amount of people. You can just fit more country houses on a particular plot of land. And one other reason why I wanted to get this active as soon as possible, because there's a, a cooldown on when you can co put another foreign policy thing in. It's another 21 months in this case. 
All right, the garage is finished. So now the Tropicans will move around more efficiently. So anyway, uh, four and eight is one way to get money. The other is, of course, uh, exports, which we currently don't have any of. Uh, actually, let's make the farm slightly higher priority so my people can start working there. And then, uh, actually, let's pause that. I want them to go immediately Speak over to fresh. the farms. I don't have all day. Now we will not be having any exports for the first few years, and that's not good. As long as I can get people to live in good housing, more better housing, because the tenements are not much better. Housing quality of 38, but they can house quite a lot of people. Alright, that's one Never farm done. Alright, let's see the economy. I have eight unemployed people and a farm needs six workers. So we'll not be reaching quite the right level just yet, probably. However, while I'm at it, I might as well activate social security. It doesn't cost me as much right now. And it'll make sure that none of my uh, shacks remain upright because it's probably one of these shacks that has that retired person living in it. Uh, oh, yeah, here. Here we have a couple of retired people. Now, they can't afford to live in a proper house. Alright, so we've got some money. That's good. Alright, now we can finish building this. Are you a rebel? And then we can start working some more important stuff. Another way to make your people more efficient is getting a marketplace. Which will ensure that your people will not have to run all the way over to your farms to get their food. Instead, food will be uh, put here so that people can enjoy it. And then the ways to get more people in your island, because we currently we have 52, is immigration. This one. And probably your most important one, because you need about 400 people before you even get anywhere close to uh, a regenerating population. See? Ah, some people are disagreeing with my policies. What Let's calm them down. Tomorrow, we expect a heavy sure rain of frogs. This unusual phenomenon is apparently not so unusual, since our neighbors claimed even stranger stuff was falling from the sky, including sardines, jellyfish, alligators, and sadly, cows. El Presidente said that it's better raining frogs than men. And there, uh, she's calmed down. Alright, let's get over back over to the construction site. Eight new people. That will ensure that at least enough people live on my farms, but of course it will also increase the number of shacks. And I kind of want to be rid of this building, so I'm just going to blow it up. not going to help my popularity as much right now, but it doesn't matter. As soon as this tenement is built, it will ensure some people will love me because they will suddenly have a good home. Of course, as long as there are shacks and shanties, they will hate me. Alright, there goes that building. And it's gone. And uh, let's put some houses in there. And just for the sake of making it look a little bit nicer, we'll put down a road. Uh, we at Fruitless Limited want to propose the following trade agreement. We are ready to contribute 10,000 to the island's economy. If you agree that Fruitless Limited will handle all of St. Helena's agricultural exports at the current export prices for, ten years peri for a 10 year period. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I don't see any real problem with this. 
course, if the prices should rise, that'll be a problem for me later. But right now, this just helps me and gives me more points. But I will see you all in the next episode.